everyone. Welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, if you've watched our live streams before, you know who it is. It's my executive producer, my cameraman, director, uh, editor, IT guy, head cook and bottle washer, and he's also my husband, Phil Gortimer. And good afternoon if you're on the East Coast, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. If we sound a little tired, you might need to give us a break. We literally got home an hour ago from our campground. It took four and a half hours today, so. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. No more leaving at 10. Leaving at 7 next time. <laughs> All right. Let's start this off because I think we need this. Today we are having our, probably our favorite cocktail. We're having a classic Manhattan. We are going to do a little... Light, summery, fruity drink like a pear martini or Cosmo, and, and as I was gathering the No, we need something much yeah. stronger. <laughs> I'll bring this to you, dear. You stay right there. Yay. I can't move anyway, so. Here's Maxwell the cat. There you go. All right. So, everyone, cheers. Thanks for joining us. Mm. Good stuff. Always good stuff. Okay, um, so we didn't really discuss how we we're going to do this today. So why don't we talk about the contest and okay. all that first all because first. of the good news about yes. it. Okay, so as you all know, I've been competing in the Carla Hall Taste of Home Favorite Chef Contest. Thank you for all of your support. Because of that, I made it all the way to the quarterfinals. I beat out thousands and thousands of people to make it there. I had to be in first place in my group, and I made it in the quarterfinals in the group I was in. I was in fifth place. I couldn't get out of it. I got up to second place for about a minute, literally. I watched it. It flipped, and then it flipped right back. So my journey in that contest has ended, uh, but that's not a bad thing because of all of your support and all of your sharing uh, our, our posts and, and you're spreading the word, our channel is exploding. We are about 40 people or less from hitting 5,000 subscribers. And more important, in the summer, we average maybe 10,000 views a month in the summer. Uh, we should hit 40,000 sometime in the middle of this week. Yeah, yeah. So from the bottom of my stock pot to from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support, your continued support. And because of all this is happening, you know, we're going to be around for a while. We're going to keep bringing you episodes and basic skills and live streams because they're fun. And just a reminder about the other one. Yes. So because I was doing so well in that contest, I was contacted by the producers of MasterChef, which is a Gordon Ramsay show on Fox uh, network and they invited me to audition so I did that right away I had to answer a lot of questions uh, write a couple essays record a video send them pictures so we did all that as soon as they contacted us auditions close this week I believe 17th. on the 17th yeah so we'll hear um, well, we'll see what happens. Whether I make it or not, it's great that they noticed me and they came to me. And, and that's like the thing I'm still geeking out about. Uh, that's like the biggest compliment. So thank you for that, too. Okay. Let me move this so I don't spill it. That would be sacrilege. That would be. That would be After this weekend. Oh, it wasn't so bad this weekend. We've had more challenging guests. Our guests were all very good. Yeah, I'm James and Peter, if you're watching, Keith one. and Jack. Okay, today, do you have anything else to add before I... I don't think so. I'm still in recovery mode from playing Mr. DJ uh, yesterday. Uh, you chose to do that. And I think we... Oh, okay, it's okay. I'm looking at... I have a new mat that I'm standing on, and, and it's a little bit higher, and the other day my head was getting cut off like that. I'm kind of right on the edge there. Yeah, good. Okay, so it's all about frittatas today. Um, you know, we've done a couple episodes on frittatas, but they're a great, wonderful thing. You can have them for breakfast or brunch or dinner, or if you say brinner, breakfast or dinner. All right, so Brian asks, what is the difference between quiche and frittata? Good question. Basic question. A quiche is a pie. It's more custardy. It has more milk or dairy to egg, 
Whereas a frittata is a version of an omelet. It's kind of like the uh, Italian version. It started in Italy making it this technique. I think it roughly translates to fried scrambled eggs or something, but it is more egg, and some people put dairy in it, some don't, but it's more of an egg, like a big flat omelet or an open face omelet. Whereas a quiche is fluffy and usually has a crust. So why are we doing frittatas? Well, they're fun and uh, people have been asking, like, I, I need some new recipes. And, and you know, so we're gonna do a couple new things today. <laughs> Brad, love a show that starts with the cocktail being shaken. Yes, Brad, and, and you know this is one of your favorites. Now, you will notice we need to give Brad and uh, Brian. give him a shout out, Brad and Brian. So you see this contraption uh, behind me that's, I don't know if you can hear it clicking as it's heating up, uh, but they, uh, when I was in the Carla Hall contest, people could buy votes. And big shout out to Cindy and Hal and all the other people who, and Brad and Brian, who bought votes and everyone. I don't know who all bought votes, but I know people spend a lot of money. All that money went to the James Beard Foundation. And Brad and Brian were going to make a sizable vote. And we said, nope, don't do it, don't do it. So they donated the money and because of their generosity, we were able to buy this handy dandy countertop oven, convection, convection. oven. Yep. I, I, I don't know, I've, this is the first time we've used it. So we'll see what happens today. No, but we cooked Thank it. you, Brad no, and Brian. We yeah, cooked, you did. We, we, we cooked mushrooms. Yeah, we heated up some stuffed mushrooms, mushrooms with it. it. But you did that. I have not used it. This is my first time with it. So, back to frittatas. And just a reminder for everyone, if you're watching us live in chat, tell us where you're watching from, and a little later on, we will put the map up and show where everybody yep. is. Actually, I don't want this If first. you have a question, type it in the chat live, and we'll try to answer it. All right, so we're going to start off today by making a smoked salmon and potato frittata. Now, I... Wanted something different, uh, Phil found a picture of a smoked salmon frittata. So I started reading recipes and looking it up and, and getting an idea of ratios and things. Um, I'm just kind of winging it right now. This will be an episode, we'll probably record it tomorrow if I can get it right. Patty says, my omelets never work out and end up with scrambled eggs. This seems easier. It will be, you'll see. So I'm gonna start off putting my pan on low or Maybe medium low to start. I'm gonna put in good knob of butter. Even though it's a nonstick pan. Now I have a 10 inch because that's as big of a pan with a handle that I can fit in this. So this is gonna be a thicker frittata. If you do it in a wider pan, it'll be a little thinner. And that just means it'll cook a little faster. So we're gonna get that melting. We're gonna start potatoes. Now you sure you're seeing this big blob of white here. Let me take them out of the paper towel. This is, these are canned potatoes that did not have salt added to them and they're just diced. And I had them, I drained them and I put them on the potatoes to help it drain just a little more, maybe wick away some of that. This is a case where using a canned product like that is okay. If you're going to use fresh potatoes, you'd want to cook them first, like maybe parboil them and before you can dice them. You can dice or slice I haven't been using dice today. All right, let's get them going. What I wanna do is start them cooking. Even though the canned ones are mostly cooked, I wanna get them started, dry them out a little bit, maybe get a little brown on them. So we're just gonna put them in. This is, oh, I don't know, a third of the can, so maybe three ounces. When we do the episode, of course, we'll have all the proper ratios and measurements and, and in uh, metric and So and there's material. no pressure to get it right or wrong today because we're yeah. gonna film it tomorrow to come out for Wednesday, right? Well, in theory. In theory. In theory. So we're gonna let them go for a few minutes and I'm gonna hit them. Just a tiny bit of salt and pepper. I'm not gonna add too much salt because the smoked salmon is very salty. Uh, but I want to give these just little, it's going to help draw the water out of them. And I am using unsalted butter. If I were using salted butter, I wouldn't bother with the salt. All right, 
I'm loving our new camera that we have mounted in the ceiling yes. that's doing this. Yes, we, we have this whole new system of everything's mounted up on the ceiling. So there's only one tripod now that gets put away and that's Phil's camera. So now you can move around and before what you couldn't see is in front of my station here, on the other side was this big mess of tripods and wires everywhere, and it was impressive looking, but I, you, know, you couldn't get to the bathroom. You couldn't walk through the room. All right, keep an eye on these. Can you do the flip? You like that? Ooh, Dixie's gonna yell at me for that. <laughs> <laughs> So today I don't have, you know, I usually have notes and an outline. I don't have any of that today because we just didn't have time for it uh, when we got home. So while those go, let's talk about the eggs. This is an egg dish after all. I have here one dozen, uh, I don't know, large, extra large eggs. I'm going to add some half and half from my antique half and half pitcher. A splash. Now some people say don't add milk or water, just do that. I like adding a little half and half. You could use cream, you could use plain milk. I just think it makes it a little richer. Oops, they're really spitting at me. All right, they're just starting to get a little golden and that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We wanna break these up and then whiskey, whiskey. Just to combine, you don't need to get them frothy. Look up. Look up, why? Oh, Artie says I always put potatoes in my frittatas. Yes, very good. That's kind of a classic thing, actually, I, I, from what I've read. I don't usually, I've had them with potatoes, um, but yeah, it, it's always a great option. I just never think to use potatoes in my frittata. All right, that's combined. Now, to these potatoes, I'm gonna add a couple scallions, just the white and light green part. Add that in. We're gonna let them go a little bit just to get them going. These potatoes didn't drain very well and they're spitting all over me from the water and the fat. All right. Uh -huh. That's a Phil and Dixie alert. Right. How many times is he gonna flip, ding? <laughs> How many times is he gonna flip and throw stuff on the floor? Ding, 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 yeah. All right, I'm gonna save this for later. Okay. Our eggies. I'm actually going to let that go, nice and small. So, to our eggs. I'm gonna add some dill because salmon and dill go great together. This is just a couple of tablespoons fresh dill. Give that a little stir, stir it up. And then of course, oh, Joan asks, can you do a vegetarian version? I will uh, another time, but yes, you could actually do a vegetarian version. Sure, all potatoes and vegetables, but again, what I would do is I would start off pre-cooking the vegetables a little bit. I'm gonna add some salmon here. I have about a half a pound here. I don't know that I'll need all of that. This is kind of salty. This is smoked salmon. So if you use smoked salmon, taste it first because if, if it's really, really strong, you might not wanna to use too much of it. You need to adjust your seasonings to compensate for that salt. All right, there we go. I got a case of not pushing the right buttons again today. Oh, silly bear. Okay, I'm going to pour this over my potatoes and scallion mixture, just like that. Let's get that out of the way. And now I have some goat cheese. This is about four ounces of goat cheese, plain. You can use something with more in it if you want, herbs and spices. But I don't wanna compete with the dill, so I'm just gonna put little dollops in all over. And what I'm doing here, this is still on a very, very low heat. I turned the heat yeah. down. 
What, dear? No, I'm talking to myself. Oh. Since I had new buttons on here. <laughs> oh. I'm really just letting this go for a few minutes to get the bottom set. Some people like to cook it all on your stovetop, which you can, and then put it in under the broiler or in the oven at the last minute. I find uh, if I just let it go until the bottom is set, uh, it, it's less likely to burn on the bottom. And sometimes when they're sitting there, even on a low flame, you know, eggs will burn really easily. All right, let's give this a check. Ooh, I never would have thought of doing that. Doing what? Beth, Beth? Do, you live, do you live on a farm? I wonder how this would be using duck eggs instead of chicken eggs, wow. That's a good idea, probably be very rich, because duck eggs are, are very much richer than chicken eggs, but. You know, dear, we can still get duck eggs in our local Acme, so I, maybe we need to experiment with them more. Acme, Acme actually is a supermarket chain here in the New Jersey, Philadelphia area. I don't think they're nationwide. Uh, you, you might know them in other parts of the country as Albertsons. Albertsons. Yeah. And there's a couple other chains owned by Albertsons. Okay, so the bottom and sides look like they're setting up nicely. Yep. So now I'm gonna pop this in this oven behind me. Let's open it up. In it goes. All right. We'll close that. How long is that gonna take? Well, depending on how wide your pan is, if it were a thin omelet, it may only take uh, maybe five minutes. This is a little thicker, it may take 10 minutes. Some recipes call for baking them for like an hour. What I usually do is I'll start checking them after maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and you'll see, they'll be jiggly and wobbly on the center. Temperature? Uh, I don't know. I'll have that all. I'm baking at 350. That's what I was oh. asking. I don't know what temperature I should cook it to offhand till it's set. It's eggs. All right, so back to, while that goes, I have some more frittatas to cook for you in a bit. Jamie What's says, my, my Nona, here you go. My Nona always made these, but, the, with, but with basil and other Italian flavors. Yes, you can take these in any direction. That's why I love them so much. I make them all the time when we have a crowd for breakfast, especially up at camp. And uh, you can just get creative. You could do a seafood, you could do Italian, you could do vegetarian, you could do a, like a meat lovers, whatever you like. Yeah, we do a lot of bacon and sausage. Yeah, because that, that's always safe, or cheese. ham and cheese. Because I did ham and cheese frittatas yesterday because that's always safe when you have a crowd of people. Most people like ham and cheese. Not everyone eats eggs, but that's too bad for them. Let me check in with Hank here. Let's see what yes, the temperature is. Yes, what's going on? Hello from Phoenix, Arizona, where we enjoy the moisture-laden monsoon clouds, a break from the 110 days, and escape from the heat dome. Looking forward to the Brinner episodes of Frittata. Yeah. And then he says, oh, by the way. No, it's only 100 Fahrenheit right now. Well, uh, Hank, we're not far behind you. It's, it's in the 90s here today, so we're right there with you. The interesting paradigm of that whole thing is up at our campground, it was 54 last night. Yeah, but it was damp and, and muggy and, and ugh. You know, when it's cold and damp and the air is still humid and ugh. But it did make for good sleeping. We had all the windows open, snuck it on the blankie. Cassidy says, I always thought these took a long time to cook. Well, you know, it all depends on what you put in them how big of a pan you're using, uh, and your oven. You know, I could tell you I put it in my oven for 10 minutes and it's perfect, but it might take 35 minutes in your oven. You know, that's just part of it. And why don't we take a break here, because we got right. enough people in. Yeah, let's find out where, where people are. From. Good. So let's see if I can first get all these queued up. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's bring the map up. And we don't have any blending from out of the country today, so let's just zoom in on, on us in uh, the US. I some of our friends in England. Well, but we have a couple from Canada today. Okay, well. All right, so let's see what we got. Like my cursor, get you back on the right screen here. Mm -hmm. There we go. 
So let's put us up there to start the map. So yep. we're in Saloon, Jersey. Yep, yep, yep. We have Mary from Cape May. She's a regular watcher. Yep. And then we've got, oh, Byron, Lake of Pakong. Byron, I used to own a house in Lake of Pakong, New Jersey, on the west side by the state park. Oh, uh, what else? Who do we got here? R.A. from Calgary, Alberta. Did it get it on the map? I do not see it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, didn't realize it was Canada. Welcome, R.A. from Canada, from Alberta. And Melissa's back. We haven't oh, seen great. Melissa in a Hi, while. Melissa. Haven't seen a bit. That's and of course, excellent. we have Brad from Lake Ariel. Yes, we love our Brad. And um, Brian. We love Brad and Brian. And let's see, who else we got? We got a bunch more. Hold on. Okay. Got Kate May Hapak Kong. Mark from Harrisburg. Excellent. Oh, Susan's back from Toronto. Oh, great. And then. Excellent. Come on, Facebook. You're a little slow today. There <laughs> you go. It's hot here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Jolene, okay. Jolene's a regular. Oh, I guess it didn't get it because it was spelled wrong. I'm um, trying to make this software smarter. Aha! Uh -huh. We have friends in Milford, Connecticut. Yes, we do. From Marianne. First time here from Milford, Connecticut. Possible going to Thank you. Yes. That was a fun episode. And, and, and that was a. It's funny. That was one of those episodes that we did and we thought it's going to go nowhere, but we need to produce something. And then it's like, pow, everyone wants it. But truly, when we ate it the first time, we were both blown away. So it looks like we have a Northeast cluster today. Well, that's good. So I'm uh, sure are, are, are Phil and Dixie in? Not and sure. And what about our children? Kevin? Cl Cliff is oh, in. Oh, Cliff in. Good. Cliff and Alan. Hi, guys. Yeah. All right. Let me get rid of the map. The only problem yeah. is next time I put the map up, it erases it. I know. But Cliffy, we need to have dinner soon. All right. So actually, it's close to 4 o'clock. Let's do our little commercial here. OK. Do you have a site? Oh, that? yeah, you do. You have, you have a site. the yeah. Fox Hollow thing. Right, right, right. Give me one second. Yep. Uh, talk amongst yourself while I set that <laughs> up. <laughs> okay. Kevin's here. Mackenzie says hi. Hi, Kenzie. All right, let's prep our next. Yeah, let's start prepping you? for our next. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I here need about go. two minutes. Brett says, I tried making one of the vegetables. It was dry and tasteless inside, but gooey and wet on the top. Oh, you know what? I've been there. Probably, you know, that's why I say when you make a vegetable one, you want to pre-cook those vegetables because they're full of water. And so you want to cook them to start softening them, get their juices to wake up, but get that water to come out of them and, and boil off, and that will intensify their flavors. So probably what you're seeing is gooey on top was just the water and juices. It was probably clearly overcooked. So that's why I say when you're watching them, and you shake it in there, it's still a little jiggly. What am I gonna say? Take it out of the oven, carry over cooking, we'll finish it. Or you could broil it for just a couple moments, but nine times out of 10, carry over cooking is gonna finish it. Um, and if you have like cheese and things in it, that's all gooey things that are gonna make it a little jiggly. Now, there's a difference between a little jiggle and all liquid. So, but yeah, I, I've done that and I've made that mistake. My mother used to make this thing she called a ham loaf, which was a version of a frittata, but made in casserole. And she would always overcook it. And it was, you know, we saw that little casserole dish come out and we knew that, you know, the, the Easter ham or the Christmas ham and we we're like, oh, she's gonna make that ham loaf. And it had such great potential, but she always overcooked it. I may have to try and recreate that someday. Um, if I can get over my PTSD for it. All right, now I'm ready. ready? <laughs> I have all the things okay. I need. <laughs> You're sure? I'm sure. Push the right button. All right, but I'm gonna push the right button today. Maybe. Uh, laptop and fill. There we go. So, um, normally at this time we always feature a small channel, and we have mm -hmm. featured our friends over at Fox Hollow uh, once, but I like to do a little commercial today for them. Uh, on. Sunday, uh, excuse me, Saturday at 5 o'clock on August 19th, they are doing a live stream uh, for No Kids Hungry. And they raised $1,100 last time, and they are looking to raise $1,500. And they did ask us if we would 
um, try to send some of our users over there. So if we can get 40,000 users to watch us, let's get a small fraction to watch them and help them raise some money for No Kid Hungry. I mean, it's such a wonderful cause. Yeah, uh, and, it's, and these are great it's guys. Now, they have it Network. Saturday, yeah. we're gonna be a little busy, but I'm gonna try and sneak a laptop yeah. off between serving cocktails on Saturday at our campground. I'll see if I can sneak in for a bit, but give them a help, and these guys are doing well. They're, they're getting some traffic, and mm -hmm. we're proud to hopefully yep. send some their way. Yep. Okay, commercial over. Back to me, Bob. Back to you, Bob. So I just love frittatas because you can get creative with them. You don't have to make them in a skillet. You can make them as a casserole in a casserole dish, which my mother did. Uh, our friend Brad shared a recipe with us where he made it, and, and we made it into an episode. That After never... the cameras failed at your house. <laughs> um, that was embarrassing. That was. That's okay. So I'm gonna make another one, and it probably won't get in the oven because it's already four o'clock. Uh, this will probably be done just before we're ready, but uh, I'll walk you through the steps. I'm starting again, dozen eggs, splash of, healthy splash of uh, half and half, a little bit of salt and pepper. Just a little. And I know the big thing now is don't salt your eggs, it makes them tough, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I, I find eggs without salt are tasteless. And if you cook them too long, that's when they get tough. Vicky, what are your thoughts on organic eggs? Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I love them. I don't buy into the whole organic thing that's healthier. It is in a way because it, if they're certified and it's tough to get that certification and they're raised without, you know, especially like eggs, without all the steroids and growth hormones, et cetera, et cetera. What I find between organic eggs and the mass produced eggs are that they have a tougher shell. It, they just seem to be a better product. Are they worth the money? I think so. Um, I, I don't mind paying extra for a better product. When I can, I'll go even farther and get them from a local farm because that's as organic as you can get or as fresh as you can get anyway. But I do prefer uh, organic eggs over the mass produced ones. Uh, I find the mass produced ones, their shells are very, very thin. And while they may be more shelf stable, uh, I don't know. I don't like picking up an egg and having it break in my hand where the organic eggs, you have to work to crack that Hang shell. on one second. I what? just got a request in Facebook okay. for the URL for um, the guy's live stream. Oh, great. It's already in the chat. Mm -hmm. It's also in the description and show notes. Uh, for this episode, and here it is on the screen, though I'm not sure if you can copy it. But again, look in the chat if you're alive now, or look in our description, yeah. or just jump over to Fox Hollow and hit their subscribe button. That'll make them happy. Yep, yep. Okay, back to you. Thank you. So anyway, just like we started for a dozen eggs, some half and half, salt and pepper. I'm just gonna whisk to combine. Oh, a little piece of dill snuck in there, oh well. Never mind. Ooh, okay, here's an interesting one. What? I don't eat pork, so ham and cheese is out. What else can I use? That's a great question. It really is. You can use anything. So, what I'm gonna be making next is a sausage and Swiss cheese, which is pork. But, you could do it with other types of sausage. You could do it with chicken sausage, or turkey sausage. You could use turkey bacon. You can use, you can do a steak and egg version. If you don't eat meat, you can do a vegetarian version. Mix up some of those flavors, like autumn is coming, so get some of those squashes and pumpkins and, and fall flavors, onions and things in there. Just gotta be creative. You could do seafood. We did a smoked salmon one, but I uh, know of recipes, I have recipes for ones that use a lot of seafood. All right, let's put this aside. So I said, you don't have to make it in a skillet or a frying pan, what else could you do? You could do a casserole easily. And that's such an, uh, you know, we have a crowd too. Pop in the oven, the oven does all the work, you're done. I'm a little different right now. I have my muffin tin here. I'm gonna give it a good spray with some cooking spray so they don't stick. Or in theory, they won't stick.
You could butter these individually if you want it. And I, uh, if I weren't doing this, trying to rush it, I probably would because I think butter tastes better than, than a, in a can spray. And it's probably healthier for you, but for this, we'll just give it all good spray. All right. I'm gonna start with some sausage. This is just some sausage meat. I just crumbled and fried up. It's about half the little tube, about four ounces or so. And I'm not gonna do all 12, but you'll get the idea. Yes, I'm, you are gonna do all 12. Oh. I want breakfast, I want lunch tomorrow <laughs> on the road. His Lordship has spoken. Okay, I guess I'm doing all 12. Well, and after I get back from the doctors, I gotta eat something. So. Yeah, all right, dear. And I won't have time to be cooking for you tomorrow. So I'm just gonna put some of the sausage in the very bottom. Kind of as a little surprise. Now you may think, don't you want it all through the frittata? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a little tickled today. Um, that usually happens on its own, especially if you have a thinner one. In this case, I want them on the bottom. Hank is asking, what's the make of the countertop <coughs> oven? Excuse me. Oster? Yes. It's Oster. Oster. It's the Oster commercial version. Uh-huh. Hence the, it's still new as you can hear. It's making the clacking noises. Yeah. I tested it already in turbo confection mode. And ooh, it makes some pretty cool stuff. Okay. But this is one of those cases for this. Again, add anything. Add some cooked spinach to it. That's been drained of all of its liquid. Add peppers, add onions, you know, saute down a little bit. I'm just doing sausage and Swiss cheese today. Dorothy says her frittatas are always burned on the bottom. Okay, well that's because if you have them on a high heat, if you're cooking them on the stove top, that's sometimes gonna happen. So that's why I like to cook it until it's just set. They may always be a little browned on the bottom, but if they're burning, you probably got on the heat too long where the heat's a little too high. We're just gonna ladle these in. And you don't wanna overfill them because they'll puff up a little bit. Just like that. And how fun is this? Everyone gets their own little egg cupcake, frittata cupcake. Sorry, Lance and Ken. Well, sorry, Lance. Our friend Lance does not like eggs. And that's all right. We love him anyway. Even if it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Who did I say that out loud? I'm but sorry. These are little fun things to do. Just get creative. You could even do them in the little mini size muffin tins and have like bite size. And that, that's a great item for a party on a, on a buffet. Little teeny, you know, like the bite-sized quiches, but crustless, so you could say, hey, they're low carb. And they're gluten-free. I agree about the thin shell thing. My niece has free-range chickens on a small farm in your town. Oh, and I get her eggs once in a while, the shells are definitely thicker. Yeah, Cliff, exactly, absolutely. And I, I just find them to be a superior product. Uh, the yolks are, are a better color. They, the eggs themselves seem richer. Look at that. Could you have done that again? Right? Hey, I might have done this once or twice in my career, dear. So likewise, I would pop this in the oven, 350, pop until they were anyway. popped up. It should up. fit on the bottom. There's no shelf on the bottom oh. here. Oops, I forgot something. All right. I will put them in and we'll continue to cook them. Can I change this to convection in the middle? Mm -hmm. All right, well, let me check it. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves? Yes, you. Really? Yes. All right, so let's see what's up in the next. Oh, here's a good one. Okay, well, you can read Ellen it. Ellen says, I like spicy food. Can you make a spicy version? And yes. the answer is absolutely. absolutely. So before I get into that, I want to see if I can show you this. It's puffing up, but you can see it's still a little liquidy right in the center. So it's got a little couple more minutes to go. It won't take long. It smells amazing. Was, oh, just, is there a broiler in this thing? Yes. Oh. Uh, hit the button that says oh, turbo. I, or the button that says broil. 
Yeah, but no, just hit the, yes, or you can do that or too. Or turbo convect? Turbo convect. All right. And what did that do? And then start? Uh-huh. No? Oh, didn't do anything. All right. Do I need to hit cancel first? You might have to can cancel first. Okay. Okay, now turbo convect. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Sure, dear. <laughs> cancel, because you still have numbers up there. There you go. Now try right. it again. Uh-huh. You were saying? There we go. There we go. Start. And start. And then hit start again. <sighs> okay. Jiminy Crickets. I need a drink after it's that. It's a very sensitive touchpad. We have them Well, right I'm one of those people, you know, all these like touch screens, they never like my fingerprints and, and it, it's so I'm I'm like the old people. I'm looking for a little stylus at the market because none of the little I don't know. Carol asks, what's your favorite combo of frittata? Hmm. That's a tough choice. I would say something like I'm making right here, anything with a type of sausage in it, uh, sausage and cheese, maybe something fresh like some peppers or onions, but yeah, anything with sausage. So back to the question about spicy. You can absolutely spice this up. You could use, say, chorzo with it. You could add any type of chilies to it, chili oil, anything like that that would make it more spicy and uh, full flavor. You know, I wonder if our, our favorite Mexican chef, Patty Kinich, has a version of a frittata. We'll have to look that up, because I bet that would be a great spicy version. Or maybe some of our friends out there who are crazy about spice. Michael. Melissa, use the muffin tin as a quick snack or a meal later. The muffin tin is a great idea. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, th this is exactly that. This is a great snack, and it, it should go quickly. Maybe not in this oven, but um, in your regular oven, it certainly, it certainly does. And then you have, <clears throat> excuse me, you have this, exactly this little handheld snack. Kathy says my kids are picky and I'm not sure they would eat that. So then start them off, say with a cupcake, make it ham and cheese, right? If your kids eat ham and cheese. If they like ham and cheese, start them off with something fun, a little eggy ooh, cupcake, ooh, right? Ooh, 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 I, I got one. What you do wanna you? do it for the kids? Put mac, mac and cheese oh, there inside you go. the yeah, egg. Yeah, sure. So now they've got egg oh. and mac and cheese. And Except for some of our grandkids who don't eat mac and cheese. Well, yeah. Our oldest grandkids don't like mac and cheese. They have much better palates. Anyway, back to this. I have some shredded Swiss cheese. And we're just going to do that. That is cooking fast. So sprinkle this on liberally because you want all that delicious gooiness. I'm not gonna have enough here to get all 12, but that's okay. You certainly get the idea. Okay, let me check that. I've not used this convection oven, so. Still a little jiggly? It, it, it's amazing, it is almost done. Hold on. The convection mode worked really well. Like an air fryer, this is also supposed to be, yeah, this is done. Cool. I wanna see you flip that out. I'm not gonna flip it out. Oh, you're no fun. Stand down, queen. No, there's a reason. Dear, like, do you not know me? Hold on, I gotta put a little thingy down so I don't burn my board. Where are my corks? I don't know. Here they are. It wasn't my turn to watch them. Let me put that down for a minute. Let's put these in that convection oven and see what happens with them. Yeah, the oven is definitely getting used to being warmed up. It's not clicking now, so. As much, yeah. Yeah. It did say it'll be like two weeks before it's all broken in. That's fine. That's all good. All right. Now. How beautiful is that? It looks like it's gonna slide right out. Yeah, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let this rest before we, come on. It is still a little gentle in the center, but that'll be okay. There's still a little 
right here. That's a little liquidy. We'll see if the carryover cooking will fix it, or maybe. Here we go. Let's do that. There we go. So we'll let this rest. The ambient heat, leftover heat from the pan should cook that last little bit. But look how easy that was. The oven did all the work, not me. So what else can you eat? Oh wait, I've always made frittatas in a baking dish I never thought to do in a frying pan. Well, sure, and, and that's super easy, especially, you know, use a nonstick frying pan. Don't be a hero and try and use a stainless steel or a cast iron. I know our cast irons are all uh, nonstick, but use a proper nonstick pan and you're guaranteed it'll come out, or 99.9% .9 guaranteed it'll come out easily. Now some people flip it over and cut it that way. I like to slide it out. Avery says, ooh, in a muffin tin, that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's a fun little idea. We've actually done some episodes on little ham and egg cups and little individual with, with pie crust and then little individual quiches. So oh, that's, that's the one where we did the ham around the outside. Right, we used the, the ham as the crust. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Is that on our, under our old series or did we do it in our new series? Because if it's in our old series, then it sounds like it's time to recreate it. I don't know because we've done multiple versions of things in muffin tins. So I could not tell you that off the top of my head. Aww. Carol says, I'm sorry to make it further for our favorite chef competition. I voted for you every Oh, thank you, Carol. You know what? I made it a lot further than I expected. And that's, again, thanks to all of you out there doing that and voting. So thank you for that. I'm not upset by it. I was actually getting a little tired of every day. Hey, everyone, vote for me. Um, what I found funny about it is people were saying, well, you didn't remind me to vote. OK, so do the post. You didn't put the, you didn't include the link. Yeah, all you had to do was click on the picture. No, but what's the link? It's the same link as Ooh. yesterday. Click on the picture. Here's a hot button what? topic for you. Uh -oh. Ready? Sure. Peggy, when are we going to see a cookbook? <laughs> okay. Cookbooks take a long, long time. Uh, I shared a post on Facebook not too long ago from uh, that, that Food Network chef, Cardia Brown, and she was just releasing her first cookbook, and she said, Look, all of you have been asking me for years. It's a three-year process, and it really is. So I would love to do a cookbook. There is find the time to really write all these out, write all the other stuff that goes with it. Finding the publisher, finding the agent, who's going to produce it, who's going to print it and do all that. Working out those deals takes a long time. You know, then you send it off to the publisher and editor, they send it back with, you know, and then you have to redo it all over again. It's a process and it, I'm working on it, but uh, I'm not going to self-publish it. And the most expensive part is the food photography. We're pretty good at it, mm -hmm. but for a cookbook, it has to be commercial level. Yeah. And A, that's but expensive. <laughs> I, I, I will say thank you, everyone, because a lot of people ask me that. It's in the works in that it, it, it's in my blue sky. I should do this. Um, but again, it's going to be a little while until I, you know, maybe after Food Networks pick, picks me up or, or PBS or someone and, and they'll pay for it. Dixie, I like the idea of the muffin tin. It must be with a Manhattan. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> And cheers to you. And oh, by the way, our day-to-day -day Manhattan has shifted from VO Gold to... Uh, the Fenwick? Fenwick, which yeah. is brewed right here, distilled right here in South Jersey. This is a plain VO. This isn't even VO Gold. I, I described the regular oh, VO. We're slumming it today. We huh? are. We are. Oh, well. Now, let's check these guys. All right, they're doing well. How's this doing? Oh, yeah. All right. Could have used another minute right over here, but that's okay. There's a lot of cheese right there. I'll cut you a slice over here. Would you like that, dear? Sure. All right. Let's show off the slice. I'll do my best. I'm not going to give you a big slice because I don't want to spoil your dinner. I can't eat it anyway, so. 
What? Can't eat what? Your dinner or the frittata? I can't eat a lot for because of dinner. Right. Well, we can have a later dinner. And it's also Ozempic Sunday, so. I know. Now, look at that. So now we need to garnish it correctly with a piece of salmon on top. Just saying. <sighs> yes, dear. Yes, dear. Whatever you say, dear. There you go. Well, they can't see it. Hold on. I know, just, just Jiminy Crickets. I say Jiminy Crickets when I want to use my bad words and I can't because I'm on camera. So I say Jiminy Crickets. Here you go. Where are you? There you go. Little piece of salmon. I'll deliver this to you, dear. I've got a little napkin, a little fork for you. There's that. Yum, yum. There you go. Oh, here's one for you. <laughs> we need the return of Alan Turtle. What? Love the change of decoration when I wear Alan Turtle and friends. Well, you know, they, they've been, um, Valentin got, Valentin got into a little trouble with the Easter Bunny. There was a little scandal. He's been laying low. <laughs> <sighs> you know, the Easter Bunny had never had a carrot martini before. It, it was just, it was bad. It was. Oh God, did we ever publish those pictures? Yes, we did, pictures? dear. Yes, we did. We did. So Valentin will be back, but he's been kind of, uh, to be honest, he's been on house arrest. He's going back to court. Uh, next week to see if they'll remove his little anklet and uh, he'll be allowed to move about again. Wow, that new oven looks fancy. Thank you. I think it is. We are definitely still learning it. Thank you, Brad. Yes, but it's going to make a big difference. All right, I'm going to have a little bite of this. Yes, because too. right now this is a working studio, but we do not have a stove down here. So when we are producing, we have to then run it upstairs into the oven, turn no the cameras oven. off, yep. and bring it back. All right, here's mine. Show off the center. Yes, dear, I did. There it is. Mmm, that's really good. That's very good. The goat cheese is tangy, melty through it, and the salmon just adds this level of smokiness a tiny bit of saltiness with it, and then from the goat cheese too. And the dill just rounds it all out. Of course, dill and salmon, what better marriage made in heaven than dill and salmon? Yeah. It's absolutely not undercooked at all. It's nope. perfectly creamy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ice. Now. now, see, I say that as I'm shoveling it into my mouth. Right. Okay. Oh. No, what, what, what? Here's one, and we've talked oh. about this. Wait, hold oh. on, I gotta get these other ones out of the oven. I think they're done. Oh, they're rising like crazy. Yes, <laughs> and I didn't think about that, where I'm gonna put them, so we'll shove that over. And then I'll put my little cork down. Where's and that's still hot right here. All right, we're gonna cancel that. Again, these might need another minute. A couple of them are a little juicy looking, but look at these. Look, 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 look. Some of that is the cheese too, but look how fun that is. They look like little popovers, don't they? I'm just gonna let these sit here, carry over cooking. Now this one is puffed up and hollow inside. Great. We're gonna let them rest. They'll finish cooking on their own. Oops, sorry, I meant to do that. There we go. Wrong button again. Stacy says, I keep hearing about your fruit tart. When are we gonna see that episode? Well, that's one of those episodes that we need to figure out how to film it. The fruit tart is, oh, there goes Cabot. There goes a cat. Yes. Uh, the fruit tart is, it's an easy thing to do, but there are a lot of steps. So if you break it down into the steps, it's very easy. If, if you just look, there, look at it and you're not used to cooking, you're gonna go, oh, I can't do that, but you can. So we have to be able, we have to figure out how to film it and not have it be a 30 minute episode. You know, you have to make the crust. 
then you have to do the next step. You have to make the custard. And, and there's a lot know, of it time, dead time in the fridge, and then, Yeah, and then you have to put the fruit on and let it set and chill, and then you have to glaze it and let it... So we have to figure that out. We are close to it because now that we have all this just set up, um, and we have now this oven here too, but really just having all this stuff set up is, is helping. Um, it's kind of like when we did uh, the... Uh, um, Scalloped potato episode. That took a lot to to figure out how to do it. And, and the fresh pasta. Yeah, yeah oh, the fresh pasta too. Here's yeah. one. Oh, thank you, Kathy. The pasta with gorgonzola was amazing. Yeah. And that's a case where YouTube did not push that one. Facebook did. Um, Facebook. I we saw that already, almost though. all of the traffic came from. Where are we here? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, Facebook pushed that one, and then YouTube picked it up after Facebook pushed it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, now well, let's see. You think they're done? Well, yeah. You trying to get one out? I'm gonna get one out. There's one here that's a little liquidy still, but it's, it's cooking just sitting here. So let me move that out of the way. Let's move that. Let's see if I can get I'm one out. I'm a bad bear here. I still have Manhattan left. Amateur. Oops. All right here. Nope, that was still a little bit inside too. Oh, that's all the cheese leaking out too. All right. How much time do we have? Oh, we're right at 4.30. Yep, it's perfect right. timing. So here's one out and I'm gonna cut it open. It's probably very cheesy and liquidy, which if I let it set up more, it would set up better. But nope. there you go. Oh, perfect. Look at that cheese goo oozing out. And that is the cheese, that's not the the raw egg. Cheese goo. Yes, it's cheese goo. All right, <laughs> so what? Picture time for a thumbnail, yeah. Oh my God, I, I gotta jump in here for a second. I can't tell you how much time we spend making those thumbnails. Yeah. 99.99% .99 of the time, what you see in that thumbnail mm. is actually what we filmed at that exact moment. And Once, we take them, we use my phone to take those yeah, pictures. Yeah, they're all done with Peter's cell phone. Um, I stopped using our DSLRs and our uh, filming cameras for it because, frankly, the, the uh, cell phones do a great job. Um, well, it's about 1% of the time 23? that we can't use the one that we filmed with because the problem is you're, it's brown on brown on brown on brown on brown, and brown food's good, but it doesn't photograph well. So we end up having to make another one and yeah, that was camera. um, that was some feedback we got early on when someone sent us a, a little comments message like your food really tastes amazing, but it's all brown on brown on brown. Okay, I detect a little bitterness there, honey. Not at all. <laughs> they were right, and that's Mac. If you can hear him, that's Maxwell the cat. He he's saying it's almost five o'clock. That really. Can you hear that? He wants cocktails and daddy lap time. So we have this new habit with him, uh, and it's only 4.30, but at the end of our work days, like 5.30, 6 o'clock, when Phil gets home and my day ends, we come down here and we're with him, and, and that's his dedicated daddy time, and we mix our drink, we sit on the couch, we watch a little TV, and we, it's good for us because we get to degas instead of before we were like, quick, and have dinner, and rush, and go and do this, and do this, and this forces us to chill. Hi Ted, glad to see you. Yes, thank you. Glad to see you and Jerry. Hope you guys are well. Thank you for watching. Um, but yeah, that's Maxwell, our cat, talking because he's- And that's a, one of five cats. Yeah. Though Maxwell he, he, is the only lap cat. The rest he, don't want to know you until you've- He's sitting here them. like looking at daddy, daddy, tapping my paw. Well, he- <laughs> A number of times during filming, he likes to jump up my lap yeah. while I'm trying to switch and all these cameras. A lot cameras. of times on live stream, Phil yeah, has Yeah, usually him on he's his in lap. my lap while we're live streaming. Not today, my leg is not going to allow it. And yes, someone did ask me in private Fishish. chat here what's happening with my leg. So tell them. I have another, I have another uh, ultrasound appointment tomorrow. Right now, it's not been a good week. Um, 
I'm using a cane right now. Uh -huh. Not real happy about it, but it's it, necessary. It's gonna be fine. We know what the problem is not. Right. What it isn't. Now we have to find out what is the problem. And we're looking at other doctors. We're doing all kinds of other stuff for it. So he's gonna be fine. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ted. We really need to get together soon, you and Jerry. We need to figure that out. All right. But thank you very much. So, so let's spend some time talking about what we're working on. No, where what are we working going. on? What's next for LCTV? Okay, so 100 years ago when we started this channel, or <laughs> five years ago, I shared my meatloaf recipe because for some reason everyone loves my meatloaf. And I just looked back at it, and you know what? Somehow it only got 185 views. We're redoing the meatloaf episode. And so I'm going to be sharing that with you. Uh, we have some new basic skills coming wait, up. Wait, wait. I think I just heard Dixie jump through the phone. <laughs> yeah. I think her FedEx account number is coming up now Right, soon. right, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be redoing meatloaf. We're going to be doing this uh, smoked salmon frittata. Uh, we have some new basic skills ideas coming up. Uh, silly things, you know, uh, like like people don't know how to peel a vegetable. How do you use a vegetable peeler? I didn't know you were supposed to peel potatoes and carrots. Like, okay, really, I have to show you how to do that. Okay, let's do this. But silly things like that, how to peel an onion, how to do vegetables. Uh, some basic skills as far as basic recipes are coming up. Hey guys, this is Omi. Oh, thank you, James. We love you. That's our friend James. Um, he and his husband Peter are, are great friends of ours, and they were guests with us this weekend at camp. So we like spoiling them. Uh, what else is coming up? We have uh, our next live stream could be... Oh, well, actually, let's explain why we have been off the live stream schedule and haven't been on for oh, three weeks. Oh, yeah, well, go ahead then. No, you can do it. No, you can do it. Too late. Do it. I'm off camera. Do it. Okay. Um, we are very involved in, with our campground, and I am the <laughs> resident DJ for a lot of the parties. And because also, you can't say no. Because I can't say no. Um, and a lot of the uh, live streams are the morning after a huge event the night before, which means I was up till 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and also, we've had the holidays, 4th of July, and so so we intentionally skipped three weeks, so now we can get back every other Sunday, and now we're not going to crash into Labor, Labor Day. Day coming up and Thanksgiving right. and so on. So we should be back on a normal uh -huh. two-week schedule. We are toying as we get into the winter, because the winter is when our channel really does explode, of doing it every week, but we'll kind of see how that goes. And a lot of that is going to depend... If I make it on Master Chef, and I decide to do it, yeah, let's talk about that little problem too. All right, precursor. I never intended to get into the competitive cooking world. Maybe a little local contest here, a little local contest there, just for my own ego. I never intended to do big things, so it's very flattering and wonderful that they have asked me to audition. I am terrified because. If I make it on there, I'll, it's an eight to 10 week commitment that I have to be in Los Angeles. So which means using up all my vacation time at work, taking a leave of absence, we can figure that out. You know, we'll figure that part out, but then it's- The bill collectors won't be happy. <sighs> I'm raising my hand in the Zoom call. I'm, I'm raising my hand in the Zoom call, dear. Anyway. Uh, we'll figure out, we'll figure out the money, but it's, say, 10 weeks away from home, right before Halloween, my holiday, to literally the week before Christmas. So I will miss Thanksgiving, which I, it's not my favorite holiday, but still, I don't want to be away from that much time. Excuse me, and now I'm watching episodes of The Master Chef, and it's like, oh, do I want to do this? So... If they choose me, I will absolutely do that. What that may mean for you guys, if I'm out there and we don't have enough time to record a bunch of episodes, LCTV is going to have to take a hiatus. There will be no live streams, there will be nothing. But it's a, it's a huge opportunity and I get that. So even if I go and I'm cut in the first week, 
it's it's a huge exposure, right? And that's a great thing. Um, but if I'm there for the whole 10 weeks, it's going to affect us and we just won't be able to do it. Um, you know, so you'll, you'll, we hope you'll forgive us and stick with us. I, I will have very little contact. I will be mostly sequestered. Yeah. Um, you have to agree to allow them to take your phone. Yeah. And I think you're, you're allowed like one phone call a week or something. Like, hi, honey, I'm good. I'm still alive. Blah, 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 blah. And you can't talk about it. It's all secret. And I get that. That's fine. But The uh, shades of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. But that's all the, all those, uh, all those shows do that. Uh, so my, where I am struggling right now is can I be, thank you, James, but can I really be away at Halloween? I'm okay coming home right before Christmas because I know my, my husband over there will. <laughs> yes, Dixie. You know, he'll have a, a big everything plan for me and my family will take care of me. But Dixie, you could drive that, down uh, here and be a live member of the audience when we do Meatloaf. That would be great fun, but we already did a live stream on Meatloaf. I know that, but you know, if yeah. we had them here, it'd be easier. Well, that's true. That's true. Just Something saying. To think about. Something to think about. So anyway, what else is coming up on LCTV? So we have more live streams, and I, I had a very interesting conversation with a, a viewer, and uh, he watched an old, old episode we did a couple of years ago, maybe in like 2019, about where I find my inspiration. It was when we tried the Fast Five series that didn't really go anywhere. And he did, watched the whole episode about my cookbooks, and we had this really in-depth conversation about how we love to read cookbooks like novels, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, I would love to see a live stream with you showing your cookbooks, the ones you use the most, where you get that. So that might be our next one. My, my cookbook uh, library keeps expanding and expanding, so I think I could do an hour on that, maybe cook a couple recipes from, from them. I'll answer this. Okay. YouTube does not allow you to re-upload the same video more than once. They consider that duplicate content. Mm -hmm. They were, YouTube is very good if you miss a week or a couple of weeks or recommending your other stuff, right. but you can't re-upload and force YouTube to show an existing video as new. As a matter of fact, that's a great way that you can get yourself banned from YouTube. Yeah. <clears throat> And honestly, a lot of those older episodes. We don't want to. We don't well, want. When them. we first started out, our production value was far superior to a lot of other people when they start out. A lot of people start out just using their cell phones, which is fine. We went a little beyond that, but where we are today, like with all this, to where we were five years ago, it, it, it's from here to here. It's night and day. Um, so I cannot watch any of our first year episodes. I'm so proud of them. But those recipes are all still valid and wonderful and, and they deserve a little more love and a little more, you know, better production value. All right, I think we've gone over by about 10 minutes, mm -hmm. 11 minutes. So thank you all for joining us and we'll hang out and chat for another couple of minutes if you need us. And uh, there's lots more coming up for LCTV, so stay tuned. So until then, yeah. It's Cheers. partially empty. Yeah. Mine is empty.